Hello and welcome to this next video looking at the developmental psychology topic for the AQA Psychology GCSE course. Um, this one looks at, continues looking at Piaget's theory uh, and looks specifically at his idea of conservation which was quite um, an important area of his work. So what conservation is, is the idea that quantities do not change even though they may look like they have. And Piaget said that looking at conservation, looking at quantities, looking at volume um, and counting can give us an indication of how children are developing in their thinking and their cognitive development. And it was one of his more famous studies, his conservation task studies as they were known. Uh, there were a couple of them. One of them looked at uh, different uh, containers holding liquid. So there's a, there's a picture there on the right hand side. You've got two containers of the same size holding the same amount of water. The children are asked, is there the same amount of water in these containers? And of course they say yes. Next, they see one of the uh, beakers of water being poured into a taller glass. So, of course, that ends up looking like there is more water in there, when in fact, hopefully, as a logical adult, you would realise that actually it's just the volume, um, the, the perception has changed. It looks like there's more water in there, when in fact there isn't. So the children are asked, is this the same amount of water? And what uh, Piaget found was that as children age, to begin with, they're not very good at conservation tasks um, and when they develop and get a bit older, they get better at conservation tasks. So it's one of the key areas that tells us uh, that people are developing cognitively, that younger children are different to older children in their thinking around the world. And around the world, around, um, yeah, around their, their concepts of the world. Um, the other task was known as the counter task, so kind of similar idea. Uh, two rows of four counters are laid out in front of the children. They're asked, are there the same amount of counters in each row? And of course they would say yes. When the researchers then spread one of the rows of counters out, so it looked like one of them was longer than the other, but there were the same number of counters, again, children were asked, are there the same number of counters in the rows? And children who aren't able to conserve, aren't able to do the conservation task, even though they've seen the, the counters be spread out, say that actually, no, the one that's more spread apart, there's more counters in that uh, row than there is the smaller one. So um, again, conservation is shown to be uh, poorer with younger children and better as they get older. So it was a key part of one of his theories, conservation. So it goes on and develops on what we looked at before in terms of kind of schemas, assimilation uh, and accommodation. What you need to be aware of is another one of the key studies. So this is actually, this study is named on the spec, the uh, McGarrigal and Donaldson's Naughty Teddy study. So this is a study that you need to be aware of, uh, need to know the aim, the method, the results and conclusions for. And basically the aim of this study was to test, was to see whether Piaget's ideas were correct. And actually, um, uh, McGarrigal and Donaldson w believed that maybe children are better, maybe it was the design of Piaget's study that led to his results rather than children actually being really poor at conservation. So what they did is they did a recreation of the counter study, but this time instead of an, an adult, the researcher, purposely moving the counters and asking the children then again how many counters are there. Instead here they um, they aim to look to see if children would react differently if it wasn't deliberately manipulated. So that's where the naughty teddy comes in. So um, what they did, so that was the aim to test if children uh, reacted differently, uh, if there was no direct manipulation. Well how did they do that then? They got children um, from Edinburgh, um, there was 40 of them from a nursery, so 40 of them were, were 4 years and 10 months old and the other 40 were five months and 10 years old. And as I said previously, as children get older, you expect them to get better at conservation and, and understanding this. So in their study, the naughty teddy was the one that actually messed up the counters. So the teddy would come along and it would mess up the counters and then they would ask the children again, um, which one had more counters in um, or if they were the same number. Um, and so what they found when doing this is actually this did change children's response to the questions. So the results were in the PRJ study, so they recreated it without the naughty teddy. They, they did it uh, normally uh, with the researcher changing it. And 41% uh, of the children got the correct 
uh, answer. So most were saying that actually there's there's more counters they weren't able to to conserve very well. However, when it was the naughty Teddy that was messing up the counters, more got the answer correct. So 68% were correct in the Teddy condition when they thought the counters were moved accidentally by a naughty Teddy. What was interesting, what was, um, I guess this actually supported Piaget's theory, is that the primary school children were more accurate than the nursery school children. So the older they were, the better they were at conservation. So really, looking at the conclusions then, what does this suggest? So the children were uh, better at conservation than Piaget suggested. Um, they, it may have been because they, you know, an adult was manipulating the, the counters, an adult was purposely changing. Maybe they thought they had to answer in a particular way whereas where, when it was with the teddy um, they were better they, they could actually count they could conserve um, so part of uh, McGarrigal and Donaldson's study goes against Piaget's theory children are actually better at conservation than, than Piaget thought they were however the other side uh, where Piaget said children get better as they age that was actually supported by this study because the primary school children were better than the nursery school children um, so there were still age differences and this supports Piaget's idea so it's not as straightforward as saying this study contradicts Piaget or it supports it part of it supports it part of it contradicted it importantly it, it progressed sciences psychology's idea of development um, and conservation uh, and that's uh, a positive so talking about that let's look at some strengths and weaknesses so there was still a weakness of this study however um, and hopefully you maybe picked that up when I was explaining where the children came from so there were 80 children all from Edinburgh so what that means is well are these results accurate everywhere do, do children outside of Edinburgh still react in the same way and actually from this study alone we don't know that there have been other studies uh, in other areas that do support it but this study alone um, it was a small sample from one school um, and so actually the differences with the groups that we saw here could have just been uh, that could just reflect children at that school or Edinburgh um, and, and not more generally uh, so it suggests the results from this study um, might not necessarily be valid they're not necessarily um, as accurate as they could be um, especially when applying this study to, to other samples other populations uh, next, then, um, another weakness is that this study um, might, may have had, had design flaws on its own. So, you know, the study was saying that PRJ may have got it wrong. Well, actually, this may have led to um, errors in this study. The way this study was designed may have led to the results in itself. So the children may not actually have noticed the change in the counters. Obviously, you introduce a, a, a teddy to, to nursery and early primary age children they're going to be very very focused on the teddy and maybe not noticing uh, the counters so uh, Moore and Fire actually did a, um, a replication of the study um, and they found that the children weren't actually noticing the counters they didn't know that a counter had been taken away they were distracted too much by the the teddy and so this suggests that the conservation wasn't actually necessarily better um, like uh, McGarrigal and Donaldson had suggested uh, the children just weren't actually paying attention and weren't looking enough um, so this, this study itself isn't uh, absolutely perfect finally there is strength that there is good points of this study and I, I alluded to that earlier uh, and this is the fact that this research does challenge uh, PRJ theory that's a good thing for us as scientists for psychologists for people looking at development and child development um, so McGarrigal and Donaldson's study findings and study it, it challenges earlier work um, and that's a really good point about science we we don't just accept things how they are we test and test again and refine our ideas and beliefs based on, on, on on what we find so um, it's good that they tested PRJ study and it's good in a way that they found some different results because it moves that theory on it moves those ideas on um, and so it's important that, that science does that it's it's known as falsifiable it's testable um, and what this means is that the study adds to the scientific process and the scientific method uh, is what we're aiming for in in psychology psychology is a scientific subject um, and it's not just common sense so, so we're looking for for those results there so hopefully Hopefully that was helpful for you to look at conservation in general um, and then specifically the McGarrigal and Donaldson study which as I said is a named uh, study and you do need to know you could get asked questions directly on that study. Thank you for listening. I hope that was helpful.